scandalous right now. People are giving false positive reviews because they want to get on a PR list and people are giving false negative reviews because they want to jump on the hate bandwagon. And then some people are making video reviews without even trying the damn products. So y'all gonna hear the truth today. Not just the truth, but the gospel truth. <laughs> Hey y'all and welcome to another Booty Guru review. So today I'm gonna be sharing with y'all my 100% honest and raw opinion on Kylie skin. This is not gonna be no wimpy first impressions, okay? This is gonna be an in-depth review. I have been using Kylie skin every single day, twice a day for the past eight days and um, I have a lot to say. I can't just go straight into the review of the products without first talking about the massive backlash that this skincare line produced. The products received so much backlash before a damn bottle was even on sale. There are a lot of criticisms that I agree with and then there are criticisms that I think are just blatant lies because people are scandalous snakes. So if you want to skip straight to the drama, you can go to this timestamp. For now, let's get into the product review. So the products came in this cute pink box and here are the products. And the packaging is actually really nice. Now right off the bat, my first complaint is that my delivery was late. It was two days late. And I understand that she just started this company, but boo. You're a billionaire. You're not a millionaire, you're a billionaire. That means that she can wipe her butt every single day with a $100 bill for the rest of her life until she dies and she's still gonna be richer than all of us combined. Get it together. All of the Kylie Skin products are cruelty-free, vegan, paraben-free, and gluten-free. And some of them are fragrance-free as well. Which I really wish that she had gone fragrance-free for all of the products. I really think that more companies should start going fragrance-free just because fragrance is one of the top reasons that people have skin issues and sensitivities. Alrighty, so first is the foaming face wash. It contains gentle cleansers, kiwi seed oil, sodium hyaluronate, but it also contains fragrance. A little goes a long way. I saw a lot of people doing like 10 pumps. That is way too damn much. Half a pump is more than enough. It feels like a very creamy foam. It feels really nice on the skin and it does a good job at basic cleansing. It didn't leave my skin feeling stripped. It didn't leave my skin feeling tight or dry. However, I don't think that it's the best at removing makeup. I used this as a single cleanser and a double cleanser and I personally liked it way better as a double cleanser. If you don't know about pre-cleansing, highly recommend you look into it. Pre-cleansing oils are hands down the best way to get rid of impurities and makeup from your face. My personal favorite is Dermalogica pre-cleanse oil. If you're interested, I'll leave a link down below in the description box. So all in all, it is a good gentle cleanser. I don't think I'm going to continue using this as my main cleanser just because I have other ones that I like better. Next is the Walnut Face Scrub. It contains walnut shell powder apricot kernel oil, jojoba seed oil, ginseng, sugarcane, kiwi seed oil, orange fruit extract, lemon fruit extract, sugar maple extract, and sodium hyaluronate. All over Twitter and all up in my DMs, everyone was saying, oh my gosh, don't use that. It's gonna cause micro tears. It's going to ruin your skin. It's gonna scar it in the long run. Basically, everybody was telling me that I was gonna end up looking like freaking Freddy Krueger. And the reason it's problematic is because there was a lawsuit against St. Ives for using walnut shell powder in their physical exfoliant. There were two women who accused the brand of basically ruining their skin with the walnut shell powder in their product. And the end result of the lawsuit was that it was dry by the judge. There was no sufficient evidence that they could provide that the walnut shell powder in fact did ruin their skin. Now I'm not saying it's not damaging, I'm just saying that I wanted to look into it and what was true because I'm not about to just believe whatever the freak everybody else is saying on Twitter. And just because they say it a million times doesn't mean it's true. And here's the truth, if you don't know how to use a physical exfoliator, you can damage your skin regardless of the ingredients. I've seen some people really dig the exfoliator into the skin and that is what's gonna give you micro tears, okay? The pressure you're supposed to use is like what you would use uh, on a tomato. So like imagine that your face is the skin of a tomato. And because of that, I recommend chemical exfoliators because chemical exfoliators use no pressure to get rid of the first layer of your skin. I really wish that Kylie came out with a chemical exfoliator, you know, like step up the game with like a new standard of skincare, but instead she brought it like all the way back. Now this is my personal opinion from my personal experience using this scrub 
three times. I don't think it was damaging my skin. I do feel the difference between this and the Saint Ives scrub. The granules in the Saint Ives scrubs do feel more jagged and big and chunky, whereas in this scrub, the particles definitely feel very fine, very finely ground. Like there is no way you could get smaller than how it is. And surprisingly, I actually enjoyed using it. It left my skin very nice, smooth, and soft. And if you use it correctly, like you should be using all other physical exfoliants, then I genuinely don't think that it's going to damage your skin. Although this scrub is very gentle, please, please do not listen to Kylie when she says, this is like so gentle, like you can use it like every day. What? No, literally every other expert will tell you, no, you cannot exfoliate every day. <laughs> Mm -mm -mm. SMH my head. However, I don't think I'm gonna keep using it just because I have other exfoliants that I really like. My favorite physical exfoliant is the Brandless Facial Scrub. That stuff is bomb and it immediately reduces my pimples. And then my favorite chemical exfoliant is Glossier Solution, which I swear it is the only thing that gets rid of my cysts. I highly recommend those and I'll link those down below in the description box as well. Next is the Vanilla Milk Toner. This contains apricot kernel oil, apple fruit extract, hydrogenated castor oil, avocado oil, sweet almond oil, banana leaf extract, jojoba oil, sodium hyaluronate, vitamin E, and kiwi seed oil. I actually really, really like the ingredients. The only thing that I don't like is the fragrance because as I mentioned before, fragrance is actually responsible for a lot of skin reactions as well as acne. However, I give her big, big props for making this alcohol free. It has this vintage milky look, which is hella cute. It doesn't make my skin feel dry or tight or anything like that. If anything, it actually makes my skin feel moisturized. So I actually really enjoyed this product. My only complaint, that's my biggest complaint, is her selling point, which is the scent, it doesn't smell good. She says it smells like vanilla milk. Where? I don't know, maybe I received expired milk, I don't know, but I don't smell the vanilla milk nowhere. It smells like, it smells like old lady perfume. Please take the fragrance out, cause it doesn't even smell that good. And if the fragrance was not in this product, I would actually make this my official new toner. Next is the face moisturizer. This contains jojoba esters, shea butter, sweet almond oil, oat bran extract, banana leaf extract, orange peel extract, sodium hyaluronate, aloe vera, and kiwi seed oil. This product is also fragrance free. The consistency is very rich and creamy. Since my skin is really dry, I used two pumps, but the hydration level I would say is medium. It's not lightweight and it's it's not heavy, it's just like a good general basic face moisturizer. The only complaint I have is I don't think that it's suitable for nighttime. You know, it claims that it can be used at night and day, and this just didn't cut it for nighttime moisture for me. I think this would be better to use as a day cream. If you are a daily makeup wearer, I recommend it because it's like a mattifying moisturizer that also doubles as a primer. Will I continue to use this? I don't think I will just because my skin is really dry and it's expensive so I'm gonna need a more affordable option that will give me more moisture. And last but not least we are at the final product and that is the eye cream. It contains jojoba oil, shea butter, camellia extract, vitamin E, caffeine, and kiwi seed oil. It's like tinted with yellow, which really helps to cover up the darkness of my eyes. It's genius. The ingredients are decent. It's fragrance free. It's just, it wasn't thick enough for me since like I said, I have very dry skin. So I don't think that I'm gonna continue using this product. If you have combination skin or oily skin, I think that the moisturizer and the eye cream will do you justice. Now straight up, my biggest complaint about this product is the fact that the biggest selling point is that it has caffeine and it helps to wake up your eyes, right? Well, caffeine is fourth from the last ingredient. So um, if you are looking for a caffeine eye cream, I recommend 100% pure coffee bean eye cream. I use it every single day, every single night. And it's like the only thing that allows my eyes to not look like swollen buttholes in the morning. So now that I reviewed the products, now I wanna talk about the backlash and the drama. What I agree with and what I do not agree with. One of the main criticisms that I do agree with is the fact that girl, Quit saying your skincare products are your favorite daily products. No, they're not. If you were a billionaire, would you use $22 face cream? Hmm? I 
sure as hell wouldn't. I would be using $100 cream, $100 cleanser because I got the shmoney to do it. And guess what? She has the shmoney to do it. So for her to go in front of the camera and say, this is the secret to my glowing skin. Girl, who the... Girl, the secret to your glowing skin is the facials that you get. And guess what? There's nothing wrong with that. If I was a billionaire, I would hands down get a freaking dermatologist, see them on a weekly basis, get me myself to some expensive, luxurious facials and all that jazz. Just please don't lie. Don't lie. And that is exactly why everybody dragged her brand so hard because... It just felt like she was saying so many lies. And that's exactly why nobody believes beauty gurus anymore because they always be lying for money. There's absolutely nothing wrong with being sponsored and promoting a brand. Just be honest about it. Don't lie saying that it's your favorite thing in the world. Don't lie saying it's the secret to this, it's the secret to that. Don't lie, just say, hey, you know what? This is a pretty good cream and I recommend it for this and this and that and that. Now, what I do not agree with people doing is people going on the internet and giving false negative reviews just because they don't like Kylie okay now let me tell you what I never thought that those words would come out of my mouth okay because I don't care about the Jenners the Kardashians I don't follow them I don't support them if anything they piss me off more than anything but that doesn't mean I'm gonna let that thwart my opinion on the products that people are expecting me to give an honest review okay I'm not gonna stand here and tell you oh my gosh <laughs> yeah I hated everything no I, I did like some of the products and there were some good aspects to them I have never seen so many people freaking dissect a brand down to the last ingredient which don't get me wrong that's good but why is everyone only doing it with her products you guys should be doing that with everything that you use freaking estee lauder clinique murad all those people i really hate this new trend of jumping on a hate bandwagon of who are we gonna hate next it's so toxic and poisonous to involve yourself in that kind of mentality where you're just kind of waiting around for your next victim it's like the internet nowadays honestly is like a lion's den and they're just waiting for their next wounded deer to prey upon and rip it apart and once they're done they're gonna wait for the next prey to rip somebody apart and it's not okay it's toxic that's the exact mentality that brainwashes people into group think to do horrible things on the internet like dragging freaking james charles and then once he did a uno reverse card everybody was on his side all over again all these millennials hopping from hate bandwagon to hate bandwagon they're gonna ride straight to their mid-30s with a freaking high blood pressure high cholesterol and a freaking heart attack y'all need to calm down and de-stress there are bigger things going on in the world World, okay so stop waiting around for the next hate bandwagon for you to jump on oh my god i am out of breath oh my god this is what i mean high blood pressure high cholesterol y'all gonna give me a heart attack i am done here all right y'all so that is my review on kylie skin as well as the drama and backlash let me know down below what you think of this whole fiasco do you agree with me do you not agree with me let me know let's talk about it Comment, like, and subscribe, and let me know down below what else you would like for me to do on this channel. Thank you for watching, and I hope you have a great day. Bye!